Today we're going to look at how to simulate GARCH returns. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Tino, aka The Dirty Quant. If you haven't done it already, like, subscribe, you know the deal. What are we going to look at today? Simulation. So what's the point of simulation? When you're doing a back test, you don't want to be using real live data because, because it's only happened once and it will never happen again. What you want to do is capture the essence of that data. What you want to try and do is see if your model will work in other environments, not just that one history that has happened. So what we can do is try and characterize the data. Um, you know, typical things would be its mean and standard deviation and then simulate it, right? But there's obviously a lot of characteristics which you miss out on. You can check out my other video on you know why Garch is so important. Again, not the tool to answer all, uh, all your problems, but um, you know, it does exhibit a lot of these characteristics. So what you can do is you can actually simulate it. So get a real live, a real return series, extract the characteristics through a model of your choice, and then use that to simulate an infinite amount of returns run your model through it and see how it behaves, right? So really quick Garch simulator, let's fire it up. All right, too easy. So what I'm gonna do is import the uh, data from the Arch package. It already has some SMP data, so we can just go ahead with that. And then this is what the data looks like. So, you know, we all know the SMP. We've got, um, you know, GFC over here, plus minus 10% a day, um, crazy times, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is, okay, well, which data would characterize this best? Look, it's okay probably to, to use guard here, but obviously, um, you know, it's not, I don't wanna say the word normal. Um, it's, uh, you know, no model is gonna be able to accommodate something like this. It's really, uh, you know, going from, you know, two, three, four, five percent a day to 10% a day. That's what you get silly things like, oh, this is a one in a thousand year event. Well, it clearly isn't because it has happened more than the, the once in the past thousand years, right? What you're doing is like, oh, I've misspecified the model. Um, so look, I'm just gonna use Garch in this case, but um, you sort of have to think, what do I want to, how do I want to characterize uh, these type of events, these sort of real um, big sort of tails, extremely fat tails, and no, no traditional distributions, you know, really can account for this, but topic for another day. Too easy, so I'm just gonna say, look, I'm just gonna use a, a Garch 1.1, and this is what the P and Q do here, and distribution skew T, so I can accommodate for a bit of skewness, so obviously the, um, more on the left tail than the right, and T to make those tails slightly fatter. Again, it's not perfect, and never will be, no sort of parametric distribution can fully accommodate for that, um, but this is essentially the output. All you wanna check for is the P's to be quite nice and small, beautiful, nice and small, the T's sort of, you know, above two-ish, whatever. Uh, they are looking fine, okay. Uh, same here for this new and Lambda. Um, you know, actually very, very little skew actually. Uh, slightly negative skew, that's the Lambda parameter and new is your kurtosis, so how fat your tails is. Seven, not extreme, but again, maybe a little bit of misspecification. Doesn't matter, right, for the purpose of this. All right, so. What does it look like? Looking at the returns, looking at the uh, condition of volatility, so that's the Garch model in um, in red. Obviously, yeah, it does obviously a pretty good job most of the time, and it, it, there's nothing you can do against, you know, that day is what, yeah, October 8th for those of us that were uh, around in the market there, you know, 11.5%, um, uh, and then the minus nine is, Crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. It, nothing, nothing you can do to sort of model those, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is essentially what it looks like. And this is what I want to do now. Is say, okay, well, these are the characteristics of the S and P, right? These are these parameters here. So you've got your your mean, your omega alpha, beta, which are um, for your GARCH, um, so your your history, your memory parameters, and new and lambda. Anyway, all of these, right? What I want to do is say, look. I know what it's, it looks like, what the characteristics are. Now I wanna simulate a, a data series based on this, right? So all we can do is, I've, I've built these three simple little uh, functions here. One is of course called a run a Garch model, super straightforward. Um, all you do is just give it some returns and it's gonna spit out a, a fitted Garch model, straightforward. Another one's called simulate returns, right? So what you do is you say, oh, give me some Garch parameters, 
give me the number of days to simulate uh, and I would essentially simulate it, right? And this is essentially all it does. It takes those parameters, inserts them into an empty model and then just starts simulated, simulating a random uh, returns, which is exactly what we want. And the last bit, essentially putting the two together so you can have multiple passes of this. You don't want to simulate it once, you want to simulate it um, hundreds or thousands of times. So simulate many returns. What is my return series? To extract the characteristics and the number of simulations to run and number of days to simulate. So essentially running this in a loop so it runs uh, again and again. All right, cool. So if we just run this, I say, look, 20 simulations returns are going to be my S&P 500 and I want a thousand days. That's about four years of uh, data. So this is my sim DF. Uh, this is essentially what it looks like. And you know, it, it could be you know, a financial asset. I mean, this is what 20 on top of each other. So, you know, um, you got to um, try and decipher it, but uh, you know, you still get some days this pink line in this pink sorry um, time series it has got you know plus minus 15 percent days so um you do get those sort of wild swing this is what it looks like in terms of like a, a distribution plot when it finally wakes up all right cool so let's wow super wide all right so can we select that uh no we unselect it i love it Okay, it's the opposite. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. You do have that uh, minus 15, plus 15 on that uh, on that pinkish line, your number 16 over here, right? Cool, so um, pretty interesting. Uh, and the last thing you really want to you want to see is essentially the return series, sorry, the price series. What does it look like? Uh, it's something like this, right? So um, over this period of, of uh, four or so years, some of the assets have essentially doubled in price, uh, and uh, this one here is essentially worth um, maybe a bit less, you know, maybe 20% less. So it's definitely an upwards sort of drift involved. But anyway, now you can run your model on this data, and you know that you're not just sort of overfitting to that specific um, historical event, which will never happen again. You can't have a time machine and uh, repeat it. So, you know, pretty good um, way to, to make sure that your back tests are true to life. Hope you find that useful. Catch you in the next one. Bye.